Howdy folks, this is Murray with 3 Bardi Productions. In this video I'm going to be going over the 3 Bardi Productions AK styled safety for the Type 81 rifles. Uh, it's just going to be a, be a brief overview and installation video. So what this AK safety kit essentially is, is it's a 3 bar Productions manufactured um, toggle cam that goes inside the receiver of your firearm. And on the end of it, it has the geometry that allows it to accept LCT Airsoft brand AK paddle safeties. So the reason why 3 bar Productions went with this route is simply because the amount of money it would take to manufacture our own proprietary AK styled safety pals, it would add up to a cost that would be more than what it would cost to just buy pre-manufactured airsoft paddles. Despite this safety kit's appearance, it only has the two functions of safe and fire. It absolutely does not introduce an auto position to the Type 81 firearms. So this safety kit will be available on the website as a standalone product but keep in mind that it is designed to work only with the 3 bar production side rails. Uh, the reason for this is simply because one of the methods it uses to retain the two different positions is a ball detent that is inserted into the 3 bar production side rail that interlocks with different steps and whatnot on the end of the safety cam. So if one was to purchase this and use it on their gun without the 3 bar production side rail, uh, you'd only have one level of position retention with the safety and that is the basic form of retention that all the other Type 81 safeties have. And that is, there's the two milled flats on the toggle cam and they interact with the safety plate, the flat safety plate inside the receiver. So in theory it could still work, but you won't have any over travel stops or anything else beyond that. It'll just, you'll be solely relying on the tension that the paddle enacts against the receiver and those two flats that are cut into the toggle. However, if you do combine this safety with the three bar production side rail, uh, the ball detent essentially locks in a slot that hold, helps to hold the safety in the fire position down at the bottom of the receiver here. And then beyond that, it has a step that acts as the over travel stop. Now, depending on how tight your components and the various positions, everything was manufactured in your Type 81, that over travel stop can vary from pretty close to the bottom of the receiver to a ways past the receiver. Um, and then it, the same goes for the t upper part of the receiver. But it is there to keep the safety from just going completely AWOL, totally off position. What mainly holds the safety in the safe position is the fact that the safety can travel upwards far enough that the divot that is often punched into these AK safety pals actually passes over the top edge of the receiver and just hooks in nicely where you see it now and that takes a fair bit of force to pull off just the right amount that's it's well it's held well in place but yet it can easily be, be manipulated down with a thumb. Uh, in the near future if 3 Bardi Productions does in fact produce or offer a bolt release and mag release system for the Type 81 rifles, there will most certainly be an added step that comes outside of the receiver here that further stops the travel of the safety right cold at the, the bottom of the receiver. That is something that will most certainly be incorporated into the design if it does hit the market. So one big disclosure I will make is despite what you see in this video, the AK safety kit will only come with a polymer paddle attached to it. Uh, the reason for this is simply because I was not able to negotiate a deal with the manufacturers LCT Airsoft in Taiwan that produces these AK PALs to do a bulk order. So to in order to get a bulk order through I had to order a minimum of 5,000 US dollars worth of safeties which is a copious amount of safeties more than I'd, I'd use in the near future. So it just made sense for me to include instead a 3D printed PETG material polymer tab that will allow you to still install the safety in your firearm and use it while you're waiting for your own LCT airsoft paddle that you've sourced out and ordered to come in the mail. These, um, 
these uh, LCT brand airsoft pals are readily available everywhere from North America to Europe. Um, they generally range in price between 20 to 40 Canadian dollars. And they come in a few different styles too. So that is one benefit of not having the, them included with the kit is it does allow you to choose between three different styles. The style that is my personal favorite that I have on all my personal guns is the AKM style. I think it, the part number is PK032. Uh, they do produce this style that's called the PK033 that I got in the package here. And it has that neat little step right halfway down the length of the safety that allows you to manipulate with your index finger easier. Some people are going to love that for tactical builds. I personally don't like the looks of it, so I probably will never install it on one of my guns. Uh, and then the third style that LCT offers is a very plain, flat, no ribbing to it at all. It's just a plain safety, and I think that's supposed to be styled similar to what you'd see on a genuine AK-47 model. So anyways, you got options of what style of LCT PAL you can order, and I'm pretty sure they're all compatible. They're all cross-compatible. They have the same geometry layout. So this right here is more or less what will be included with the kit if you order the 3 Bardi Productions AK Safety. Um, the only thing that's missing here is a small ring shim that will be included in the package with the ball detent you see here. See here, uh, And then and uh, the tension behind that is that will slip over that ball detent if the need arises. We will explain that later on in the install video. As for tools that will be required to do this install, uh, one thing you'll for sure need is the appropriate size Allen key to remove the M4 fastener that holds this polymer tab to the cam. Uh, other tools you'll need will be all the appropriate tools required to remove and install a 3 bar, a three bar D Productions side rail if you are in fact pairing this safety with a 3 bar D Productions side rail. You will also need uh, some ability to remove material from both quite possibly the, the safety cam as well as the LCT Airsoft PAL once you acquire one. This is definitely a necessary, it's going to be absolutely necessary to remove material from this, at least some of the components in it, which I'll explain later in the video. Pretty minor, but it is required. And then if you do happen to have uh, your LCT paddle in your possession, you will need some form of plier to tighten the fastener that's included with your LCT paddle uh, that fixes it to the cam, the 3 bar Productions cam. And it's just a round head fastener like you see here. So you need something that can grab the OD of that and torque it. As for how much material is going to be required to be removed from your cam and the LCT uh, safety pal, um, when it comes to the cam, it, it, it will be greatly dependent on your particular Type 81 and what version of Type 81 you're installing this on. I could say right off the bat, if you are pairing the safety with an optics ready Type 81, uh, one thing you will for sure have to remove material on is on the end here, on a small portion of the, the head of the fastener. And this is due to the fact that uh, there's no safety head relief cut milled into the, the uh, left side of the receiver on optics ready Type 81s. So you, you more or less have to file uh, some relief into the head of this or this side of this cam to accommodate for that, which can be to your benefit, which we'll get to uh, shortly. Another possible thing you may have to modify is uh, remove material from this surface of the safety cam right here uh, with the off chance that Maybe when the cam is flicked to the fire position, there's still enough material there uh, that's blocking the actual travel of your trigger or it's scuffing or hitting there. That will be something you'll have to remove then to get the proper clearance. Of course, you'll have to be careful because if you remove too much and then you put the thing on safe, you might find out that you no longer have material left there to block the travel of safety when you want it to be blocked. So that is something that the purchaser may have to be very careful about modifying. So far, with the testing that's been done on these, the only Type 81 that needed that treatment was original import uh, folder 
all the LMGs and the SR rifle you see here, uh, this just works fine. It doesn't need any modification. For the LCT paddles, what will likely need to be modified is you may need to file these two flats on the inside of the cam thing that comes with the LCT paddle. Uh, this is by design. The intention was that you would have to wick these ever so slightly so you got a nice snug fit. Because uh, any sort of play, of course, on this short throw 23 degree system is going to be extremely noticeable. You don't want that. And then the final thing you'll have to modify is the little brass bushing that comes with that kit. You will have to shorten it in length. Because the one that comes, when it comes in the package, uh, you assemble it, you'll notice the brass protrudes out past this face. Which means that if you were to just install it without modifying it, uh, this paddle will never get fully tight. There's a good chance it would never get fully tight with the three bar D Productions toggle cam. So you got you just basically got to file like um, like a sixteenth of an inch, no more uh, brass material off the end of the bushing. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get into this install. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to determine whether or not you're going to need that ring shim or not. So right off the bat, if you're not pairing this with a 3-bar D production side rail, uh, you don't have to worry about any of this because you're not even going to be using this ball detent. You don't have the fixture to hold it. So, But if you do have a 3-bar D production side rail, what you'll want to do is take your side rail, whether it be the hybrid that you see here or the AK, the new AK one, uh, you will want to flip it around so you can see this uh, kind of uh, relief at the back. And then you'll want to take your AK safety cam and you'll want to kind of put these two together like so and you're just going to be observing any uh, clearance issues you might be having but the big thing you're going to be checking here is what your clearance is going to be like between the rail holding this ball detent and how this ball detent is going to be interacting with the end of your AK cam here so that will involve inserting this ball detent into this hole on the underside of your 3 bar production side rail. Now there is a chance that when you go to do this that it this ball detent doesn't fit. I haven't ran into this issue yet with all the testing I've done, but it could come up because uh, things were purposely left quite tight here to once again avoid any perceivable slop in the system because on such a short throw system it looks ugly really quick when you got any sort of slop. So if that is the case and you do, it does not just slip in. Uh, you may have to explore possibly uh, cleaning out the hole, whether it be with sandpaper or maybe like with some sort of reamer or drill bit. Or more easily, I would just simply sand the OD of the ball detent here, the shank, the part that slips into that hole. I would just sand it with some, just enough to get it to slip in. After you've tried cleaning the hole with just, you know, um, basic tools that aren't actually going to remove any material. But in this case, this one just drops right in. So once it's installed there, what I'm going to be looking for, and I'll throw in some close-up footage of this, trying my best to show it in better detail to you, uh, you're going to be looking for the clearance you have at your disposal between the face of this, the black flange that's on the ball detent, not the shiny ball itself, but the, the gap between the face of that ball, that flange on the ball detent, and the, di the distance between it and this shelf on the end of your AK cam here. The idea being is you want this that gap to be as little as possible. So if you think there's a big enough gap there to accommodate that the thickness of that ring shim, which is 15 thou, uh, definitely that means you should install it because what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to push your uh, ball detent out away from the side rail a little bit more and force the extremities of that flange to interlock or not interlock but make contact with the edges of the the walls of this uh, the shelf that's kind of been cut or milled into the end of the thing. The idea behind this is this is all to fine tune your over travel stops with this cam system. Uh, this is very much what keeps your safety from going way past its the limits of its, um, its travel. 
it's intended travel. Uh, regardless of whether or not you put in the shim or not, uh, it's going to work. It, it, the clearances are so tight, it's going to jam up. It's gonna, it's gonna for, it's never gonna just fully go AWOL as long as you got this system installed right. But the idea being is if you can get this uh, shim to the proper distance out, uh, it should hit at the right places on the shelf that it results in a more uh, tailored over travel stop. So your safety paddle may stop at the proper locations on the receiver of your Type 81, which will just look more sightly, right? So that is. The ultimate goal there so if you think you have the play to accommodate that most certainly uh, install that when the when the chance comes up in fact you could do that right now you could uh, install your ball detent and put it in your side rail with that shim underneath it if you if it does in fact warrant it and then push it off to the side after you've squared that away you'll want to remove this plastic paddle here so this is with your Allen key. It's not locked tight or anything, it's just, it might be tight, but that's just simply it torqued against the, the plastic. See, it comes out. Be careful uh, trying to pull it out. It should be, quite often it'll be a tight fit. You don't want to snap it off because you might be needing it until you can get your LCT panel acquired. And there you go. Once you got this stripped down to just the raw cam, the next step is to install it into your firearm. As for your firearm, uh, you want to have it stripped down like a basic field disassembly. So the only thing that's left inside your receiver is your fire control group with your pins and stuff and the safety plate. And you're going to want to insert toggle cam, the, the skinny side, not the fat head side. You're going to want to insert the skinny side in through what would be the left side of your receiver if you're looking down the sights. Basically the same side of your receiver that the rail goes on. To insert it in, you're going to have to press down safe, the spring tab on your safety plate so it does not obstruct the big window in the side of the receiver that you're going to be pushing this through. That could be very hard on your fingers, uh, depending on how it's designed. Some of them are different than others. On the SR, uh, they had to snip it shorter to accommodate the stock, so it's actually kind of a bear to push down with your bare fingers because there's not a lot of material for you to push on. So you may need a tool to, put, to push that in. So once you've wrestled that all the way through, uh, it should be starting the, the one skinny side should be starting to come out the opposite side of your Type 81's receiver. And uh, the head side here uh, should be looking like it's getting pretty close to being flush with the left side of your Type 81's receiver. Now, in the case of this SR, because it's optics ready, uh, in theory, it shouldn't be flush, and it shouldn't get any more flush after that, because what's happening is the wide part of this, the, this head on this side of the cam, the part that keeps it from pulling right through and out the other side of your gun, um, it's, it's hitting on this radius. It's just the way it works. If you own multiple Type 81's, you will notice this is a critical or not critical, but it's a difference in the receiver geometry between the different guns. Uh, the optics readies uh, will not have a milled relief in that radius to accommodate the fat head because the intention is that with the factory safety that it isn't located on the side, therefore it doesn't need that. Whereas on a regular Type 81 that's not optics ready, it won't, it it will have a, a radius here because this is where the head of the factory safety would normally sit. So that's the reasoning behind that and why they're different. So this is where if you are an optics ready Type 81 owner and you're putting this on right now, uh, you will have to do some modification here. And to do that, if you don't have an optics ready, it should be sitting flush. So then you can skip ahead in the video. So this is the part where the optics ready owner will have to modify that uh, portion of the head on the opposite side here and where I said this is actually an added benefit in a way is if you modify that material correctly on this side uh, you can make it interlock with that radius in a way that it provides the perfectly adjusted over travel stop for your system so that's what I've done on my Type 81 SR here um, we're going to be switching to a prototype cam that you can see here isn't even coated yet um, that I've been running on my SR for quite a while, a very long while, and uh, 
and I'll show you the modification that I did to it. But I took my time doing this and I was able to uh, remove the material here in a way that makes it so it interlocks with this radius perfectly so my safety paddle only travels to the exact two positions that it stops cold at those two positions regardless of the force you apply to it. How you'll want to modify this depends on two things. One, or really just the one thing, if you have, whether or not you have your LCT paddle already in your possession or not. If you don't have your LCT paddle yet, what you'll want to do is only modify enough material here, remove enough material here, that it allows the safety to have basic functions. So what you'll be checking for is manipulate this so that you'll want to rotate this with your fingers so it sits in the position with the, the spring plate. Like basically you'll see how it springs to two different positions. You want to put it in the, what would be the safe and try your trigger. In this case, it's blocked. Okay, so you'd want to take note or scratch a line as to where that is, where it's hitting. And then uh, rotate to the fire position. And you can see now that the safety, the trigger works. And you'll want to mark that position. Remove the material between those two positions. Don't do anything extra. Now, of course, if you do, if you do have your LCT paddle in your possession at the time of this install, uh, what you'll want to do is flip your gun around at this stage and modify, which we'll get into later in the video. You want to modify these two flats so they fit into the slot on the end of your thing. If they don't already, of course, check that before you modify them, but usually they should require a little bit of a kiss with a file on each side. You want to install that. Um, just tighten it lightly, just enough that it's, it's firmly like interlocking with the the cuts in the safety, the cam, just and then start manipulating your safety. And that what you're really looking for is what position this is going to be in. You're going to want to obviously have it so it doesn't go too far past the bottom of the receiver. So wherever it goes, as long as your safety works, like the trigger doesn't pull, you know that checks out. And then mark that position, and then bring it up to the top. Make sure that your safety works, of course. In that position and then if it all checks out then scratch that line and then modify the material in between so that becomes your over travel stops. So you can fine tune it. You're ultimately going to want to fine tune it to match your LCT paddle. Now on to something that everybody will want to check regardless of whether or not you have an optics ready or a regular type 81 is uh, what we were essentially checking when I was explaining what the optics ready people have to go through and that is uh, whether or not in the two positions you have that main uh, surface on the, the big flat on the internal part of the safety clamp cam, uh, whether or not that does its job acting as a safety. In the fire position, check that it actually does not interfere with the trigger pull. Make sure there's, it doesn't come close and it's rubbing in any way. But yet at the same time, the most critical thing obviously is to check that in the safe position, it is for sure binding up on that and there's not by a little bit like enough that you can trust it right if it isn't binding up then you got big problems you'll have to if you haven't modified it in any way and you have the thing in what should be its safety position its safe position and it's not interlocking with it's not blocking the travel of your trigger uh, you know contact 3 Bardi Productions through the website and we'll sort out some sort of refund or something because that's not how it was designed to be however if you find that it does do that what will more likely be the case because of the way this was designed is that you'll find rubbing when it's in the fire position and that is simply because not all Type 81s are the same. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these you could see if you, a lot of these, like the ones that I've tested, LMGs and the SR, this is the perfect amount of clearance in the fire position. But yet, hop over to a 2017 folder Type 81, and all of a sudden it's hitting with like enough that you need to file material with. After you've done any sort of mo all that modification to the to the cam, I highly advise that you. Uh, re reapply some sort of finish to it 
So that could be either paint or ideally some sort of cold blue to protect it from corrosion. And then uh, definitely oil it to further protect it from corrosion. So once you're confident you got the cam successfully installed into the receiver of your Type 81, the next step is to add the toggle or the safety pal to this side of the cam. So if you don't have your LCT brand paddle yet, uh, you will be putting back on this 3D printed paddle. And its install is pretty simple. You can see you just put it in on the end like so in the proper orientation. And then bracing the other side of it, you kind of just force it into its place. Uh, if that doesn't seem to go on there, well it should actually, I guess, I guess because it comes already installed in the package. But uh, if you find it stiff to put back on for some reason, you could just wick away some of the plastic on each side with a, a file, and that'll make it easier to pop on. So once you got it installed, then you can just put back in the screw. There it is, flipping between the two positions. So you can see that down there is fire. And up here, safe. So this is just meant to be adequate enough until you are able to acquire an LCT safety. But make sure that this functions properly before you proceed. Now if you have your LCT brand AK safety paddle, um, you'll definitely want to install it onto your cam at this point, rather than the polymer one. So right off the bat you're probably going to realize that uh, this won't, this uh, fit right here won't fit in the end of your cam and that's because it's meant to be very tight so you, the intention is, is that you remove a little bit of material on each side of this here and here, just enough to get to fit snugly in the end of your cam, that way there's no play in the paddle. So that is the case of this paddle right here is it doesn't quite fit into the, the end, the cut in the end of the cam here. So what I'm going to have to do is just very carefully with a small file just remove just a little bit of material side. Okay, I'm not going to go any more than that. I'm going to check it now. Yeah, and just like that, it's already good enough. In fact, I, it's a good thing I stopped there because if I would have went any further than that, I would have started to have some play there. So that's just to show you, I only took like what? maybe six to eight passes with the file on each side and it's already at the extreme end of what I should have removed. So there we go, now that that's put in place. Uh, the next step is to shorten the, you could drop in the shim the way it is. It's gonna look like, if you drop it in, it'll probably look like it's gonna work, but um, just because uh, things aren't tightened up, but uh, it, I haven't seen a circumstance yet where you, you didn't have to shorten this brass bushing. So what you'd want to do is, uh, if you shorten it more than what's required, there's no harm in that. Uh, so I would, I would go to town with shortening that. Its only purpose is to keep, uh, to keep this paddle kind of aligned with the bore of the cam and this, this bolt. Once you've shortened that, you can proceed to install this fastener. Now I've used this enough that I've I've found that after a couple range sessions this does kind of back out a little bit. So I would recommend that when you put this in, if you don't intend on taking this apart again in the near future, I would put a little dab of blue Loctite on this. I'm not going to because I'm constantly dabbling with these things and I'll probably be taking this safety off immediately after finishing this video. But uh, yeah, you'd want to put some blue Loctite on that and you tighten it up as far as you can go with your finger. And while you're doing this, just make sure that there's nothing binding that shouldn't be. 
Okay, and then at that point, uh, you can just you just torque it to however far you want. Like the the tighter you make this, the the more stiff the safety will become. You can see already just finger tight. Uh, the safety's been on here before, so it's kind of broken in now. But uh, you can see it's already <clears throat> as tight as I'd probably want it. So at this point, you can check your over travel stop. You can see on mine, I didn't get it quite perfect. You can see it goes past the receiver, but it's it's relatively close. It keeps you from flicking it hard and, and having it go completely off your gun. What will be nice is once I get the side rail on here, uh, the ball detent in the side rail will keep this in this position. So if there's any vibrations during fire and stuff, uh, this won't work its way up and then put the you know the trigger on safe you can see it barely has to move like there it's functioning as a safety and then move it up a few degrees it's still good another few degrees and boom you're already having uh, stuff make contact so you can see there's very little room to play around with here hence why you need everything to be pretty rigid and not moving under vibration at this point you are ready to Make sure that your ball detents still installed into your side rail. And at this point, you are ready to install your side rail. Uh, the installation of the side rail will be the same as what's depicted in the side rail install videos.